Welcome back to Calvary Life. This is the podcast of Calvary Baptist Church, and for anyone out there that's interested in local church life, uh, we're uh, back with you again. I'm Charles Uptang. Oh, I'm Tommy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tommy. We didn't. We don't usually make introductions. We're that informal. Oh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> hey, I'm Paul Thompson. Glad you guys are listening. We want to talk to you about what we do here at Calvary, but not um, not specific to us. You know, Charles, you mentioned always this is. This is really for any local church kind of life and local Christian life in the body. Um, so it's really not just for us, but it is a little bit about us. But I think what we're going to talk about today is easily transferable to any context, whatever your local church context is. I think this is helpful, transferable for you. Yeah, in fact, you know, when you start, when you say that, Paul, it reminds me, I taught uh, Sunday morning in our, in our membership class, I taught Church Covenant. And that church covenant, you know, is not just ours. It's, uh, of course, we have changed a little bit of language in it, but really you can look even in Baptist hymnals back in the years and find Baptists that have used that church covenant or something about 99% of it. So, uh, and one of the paragraphs in there really, I think, deals with what we're going to talk about today when we look at Calvary Next and we start talking about being good stewards. Um, in fact, I, I, I wrote down some of the language in that covenant to kind of give us a, a starting point today as we talk about um, Calvary Next, what are our aims as ambassadors for Christ. And uh, here's some of the language. It's uh, strive for the advancement of this church. It's promote its prosperity and spirituality. Sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines and then contribute cheerfully and regularly to support the ministry. So all that is in the first main paragraph of our church covenant of the things that we as church members covenant with one another that we're going to do to really help this church be um, what God wants it to be. We are a part of the body, each of us having our gifts. And so when we start talking about, um, I guess, number three and number four in Calvary Next of these aims, um, I think it really fits with what, what that covenant says. So this one is... Uh, is good stewards is the first one that I want to talk about. So um, when we talk about uh, being a steward, um, what does that really, what do you think about when you hear the word steward, I guess, and let's start there. Tommy or Paul, either one. I defer to you for now. I think typically whenever we hear that word, we associate it with money. Um, you know, in, our, in the past, it's either a stewardship campaign, it's a stewardship sermon, or God forbid, even worse, a stewardship series. Um, so we typically think of that just in terms of, of giving, um, but really that's not what we're talking about. That's a portion of it because that's, you know, as, as we would teach in generality, um, how you spend your money is a pretty good reflection of where your values are and what's important to you. So you can't, you can't disconnect um, your financial side from, the, from your spiritual side, but stewardship is really a lot more than that. It's everything that God's given me. Every opportunity that I have, um, every gift that I have, um, every window that he opens, you know, all those things are all part of, of what it means to be a good steward. It's using, using what God has given you. And I think you could even, you know, Charles, you guys taught this actually in our stewardship open class about how you can even stewardship things like your pain and your difficulties, your hardships, your sickness, um, stewarding everything. God doesn't waste those hurts. And how do we... How do we make much of everything God has given us, every circumstance he's placed us in, every relationship that we have? I think all that fits under the big rubric of stewardship. Yeah, and yeah. so when we start, you know, one of our major headings under that, under that good steward um, aim is gifted ministry. And, and for us, you know, when we talked last week, we talked about how the three circles kind of had this, this part that was kind of missing. We talked with Dan about that, about how service was kind of, where did that fit when we talked about being in a, a you know, being in a small group, uh, being in, in corporate worship, and then doing life on life. Where does, where does ministry fit into that? And so I think that's one of the reasons really that we went to this, because we want to highlight, because the church body only functions as well as all the ministers, which is all of us, doing the ministries we're given. So um, how do we expect members to get plugged into ministry at Calvary? I mean, what are, what are some ways that we're thinking, okay, here's avenues, here's on-ramps for our people to get involved in ministry? Hmm. A starting point for us is always, for new people, the starting point is always in that meaningful membership class mm -hmm. where we just simply lay out what we do. Now, that's broad, so we're hopeful, we're hopeful in that time, that moment, that there's something that people hear that resonates with them. And so, in a sense, that, that puts the onus on them a bit. If you're a newcomer, look at these things that we do. Here's our map. Here are the things that we're committed to. And if something really grabs you, then you 
again, the, the kind of burden responsibility is yours. Find that person, find that leader. Here are the leaders of those ministries. Let them know you're interested in serving. You know, that's that's one of the ways. You know, Tommy, there's some other things that we've done too. You know, you think of some of the some of the we wouldn't exactly call it a ministry fair. It's not that elaborate, but just the periodic opportunities that we give for people to to volunteer for things, just putting those things out there. Um, mm. Tommy, would you agree yeah. with this? I think I think there are I won't say majority. That would be a judgmental statement i would say there there are plenty of people maybe too many in our church that don't even know all the opportunities that are in front of them would you agree yeah all would, the things I they could agree. be doing oh sure yeah yeah for sure um uh run into people all the time that that say oh i didn't know we did that i didn't know we were involved there or um didn't know we helped in that regard um and um and so yeah i would agree that uh there's there's plenty of of opportunity uh whether that be you know, with a strategic ministry partner, we'll talk about uh, that we have within locally or a, a mission partner globally. Um, you know, with the with the local school here that's just right down the road from us. There, there's 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 a plethora of opportunities uh, for people to plug in to serve to steward their like you said steward their uh, their gifts and their talents their skills um, to uh, to better serve the the community to display the love of Christ, to declare the, 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 the gospel, um, but also, you know, to benefit the body, you know, and to encourage the body and build up the body. And so uh, all those things work together, I think. So, but yeah, yes, so sometimes that, that distinction that you're describing, we'll, we'll sometimes phrase it this way, maybe a distinction between ministry and mission. So in, yeah. in my mind, I'm thinking ministry mm-hmm. towards, we need a ministry, we need to find some way that we're serving our own church. Yeah. And that can be formal or informal, um, official or unofficial, but also mission. I'm thinking outside of us. How am I serving this community? How am I doing local mission? And, and of course, I know we're going to talk about some of those mission possibilities in a minute. You know, Charles, you asked about that on ramp. I guess it really is multifaceted. So I'm thinking there's a primary way we would get people connected and a secondary way. A secondary way would be the way I would encourage you as you're listening to not think of this as the primary way. It's decidedly secondary. And that would be those occasional opportunities, those occasional times where we'll put something out like a survey, uh, maybe something on a Sunday morning in a bulletin or something. What are you interested in? How would you like to serve? Or these are all the areas of interest that we have. Or like I just mentioned, something like mm-hmm. a, a mini ministry fair where tables are set up across mm-hmm. the back. If one of those is interesting to you, go sign up. I don't want people to think of that as primary, nor do I want you to sit and wait for that. Yeah primary would really be more naturally occurring. So I, I'm hesitant to use this term because it's overused, but organic. So that um, just start doing things, find places and start plugging in and just kind of see where you fit. You know, we talk a lot about spiritual gifts and things. Um, I think my conviction has long been spiritual gifts are not best discerned by taking an inventory. It's not something you do on a computer or sitting in a class. It's by doing and serving. You start finding this fits, this works, I get an affirmation in this, I see God working in this, I feel God's pleasure in this. So, And then, you know, not only are you finding your way, but as you're just getting involved in things, you're going to be asked to do things. I mean, we're, we're, it, the, the burden is on leadership to find good people to lead those ministries. Sure. So, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, if you're wondering sometimes, um, maybe someone approaches you and, and asks you to do something, oh, I didn't know we had needs in that area. Well, you know, some of these areas, we don't want to just ask for just volunteers. We really, really want to try to find people who, who fit. Specific, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. looking for certain sorts of people to find to fit in certain kinds of ministry. And so uh, it really ought to be happening naturally, organically. And I'll tell you one more thing while I'm thinking about Charles, and you guys know this from your own life group experience. Some of these things are happening in life groups because we're, we're sharing that information on that level. Take this to your small group there. When I say small group, I'm typically talking about your life group, Sunday morning or whatever time during the week your life group meets or small group meets. But often we're sharing needs and opportunities there. That's a great time for a group of people to say, hey, we can do this or I can do this. I'll step up and do that. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes in some ways I think we have a maybe a little bit of a bottleneck in that a lot of our ministries run through run through staff. You know, so really the, the best person to talk to if you're interested in children is obviously Zach. Best person to talk to if you're interested in preschool is obviously Joyce. So in some ways there's a bottleneck there that it just is it is staff 
directed on purpose. And so that is the number one person to come talk to if you want some some things to do. And I, I, one reason, actually, I'm, I'm glad that we're doing Deacon of now, and we have these other deacons how, now that are leading ministries, is because I think it does broaden those guys out there that you can come talk to about different ministries. You mm-hmm. know, we've got someone that's over greeters in the parking lot. We've got somebody over security and all these other ways that these other people can also be looking around trying to find people to fill those gaps. So, But I think really probably our number one, as I look at our church, our, our best on-ramp is really probably a staff member or a deacon who's in that area. You know, just go talk to them and see if there's areas of need, which there are all over the place, and uh, we can find something that, that you can just see if your spiritual gifts fit into. And I want to say this just real quick, kind of a review, uh, circling back to where we were last week, because we talked about uh, this whole new framework that we're calling Calvary Next. And and if no one's asked me this, so I'm not answering a direct question or even an indirect question, but in case you've wondered this, and you look at this, okay, so why something new? What was wrong with what we had? We, you know, I know you guys worked a long time putting that together, and we had, we had that all over the campus in every classroom, and here's our strategy depicted in these three circles. Now we have these four quadrants, et cetera. I want to remind people, again, this is just uh, the natural growth of that and the evolution of that, because back to the point you made earlier, I just want to reiterate, we recognize the need to specifically emphasize as a disciple, as someone who's growing in Christ, you really need to be serving. You're not going to, there's a limit to how much you can grow by not doing anything. I mean, it's good to learn and it's good to participate. And we want you in worship and we want you singing and listening and praying and, and those kind of things. But we want you to be doing, and that's necessary for your spiritual growth and development. Obviously, it benefits the church. The church is dependent on its members. We we're we're a body. We're not we're not a we're not a business organization that hires out every every action, um, you know, every assignment. We're we're a body of believers doing this together, living life together. And we know our responsibility as ministers is to equip the body, equip believers for works of service and ministry. So anyway, I just want to make that point clear. When you're looking at this quadrant, um, the re- one of the reasons it just visibly looks so different is we just added in what maybe before we were assuming but shouldn't assume, yeah, that people mm-hmm. people are going to be involved in gifted mm-hmm. ministry and in, in serving. Yeah. yeah. And then the other one that I want to talk about when we talk about good stewards is really what what is I would say is it's the heartbeat of Calvary that that has been developing and has been developed I would say even um, since before Paul became our pastor towards missions and towards community um, that's really been something that Calvary has has tried to do we've done it in different ways and, and really now Tommy is the the lead person uh, that's in charge of all that so the we just get all of it he is it whoa, whoa, and whoa. so you know we've had him here up to this point for the offensive um, coordinator but now but now we're going to hear <laughs> from him on his um, his area of expertise but mm. with that with that Tommy when we talk about mission partnerships yep. and, and talk about mission trips that we have been on, um, how many how many people have we sent this year on mission trip? What do, so you, what do you think? So looking at the numbers, uh, this year uh, we've sent or will send with the ones planned for you know October, November, December, uh, about 58, 60, 60 folks. Yeah. So and and if you look at the numbers, sixteen of those were first timers this year. Uh, first time to Kenya or first time to Portland or first time to Vermont. Um, and so I see that as a win. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the, one of the, uh, I guess one of the, one of the goals in, in a sense, uh, is, is to move, you know, see members who've never considered going, serving, you know, sharing, uh, displaying, declaring, um, in a foreign context, uh, or even in, again, that's just, that's just global missions right. there. And so, um, for them to, to consider that and, and to and to, to see themselves going and, and a desire to go. And so so we got sixteen and you know, this year and you know, maybe next year there'll be twenty five new people, you right. know. Um so Tommy, what's the best way for somebody to to find out? You know, um you know, maybe if you hear somebody say, And I had no idea we were doing that or I didn't know we went there or I found out too late and that trip was already the the team was already full. What's the best way for somebody to find out who's interested? Like I, I'm, I'm interested in project. What are my options? Yeah, I just you know contact me personally. Uh, that's one way. Um, and uh, putting together now a um, a card that will uh, kind of uh, for 25 at least in the upcoming trips. So that'll be uh, that'll be out soon before the end of the year. Uh, 
designating, you know, which trips are when and, and, and things of that nature and how many folks are going, usually go on those trips. And so, um, and you always look at the, you know, if, you, if you're not aware of who we partner with, the Missions Kiosk and the Fellowship Center always has a display every month. It rotates out with prayer, prayer needs. And that's one of those things, you know, the praying, the giving, and the going. Um, and so, uh, if you can't, you know, if you can't go, you can for sure pray and then maybe give toward, uh, maybe somebody who can, who can be involved in that. And so, um, and there are, there's always missions, uh, prayer needs and cards there, uh, of those particular partners that we have, uh, local and global. So, uh, Charles, tell them how Sunday night plays into knowing about (laughs) missions and opportunities. Well, you know, Sunday night has become a great time to really hear about, uh, the mission trips and what's going on, you know, uh, usually a party, maybe a part of our prayer time as a corporate, uh, corporate group, we will sit there and talk about uh, one of the mission trips that just got back and some of the, the keys, you know, five minute interview or a, or a report kind of thing. And then we'll pray specifically for that, that mission area. So Sunday nights is a great, if you want to know what's going on at Calvary, Sunday night is the place to find that out. Yeah. You're missing. I mean, again, we don't, we don't want tears. We're not trying to have tears of, of people and insiders and that sort of thing, but I'm telling you, you're missing stuff if you're not here on Sundays, because we are talking about these opportunities. We're praying for them. We're hearing about things that have Mm -hmm. been done. You know, Tommy, I was thinking about this. Um, if somebody's listening and is interested in, say, uh, not a local ministry mission opportunity, but a but, <coughs> but a mission trip, you know, something we would – sort of a classic short-term mission trip, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's helpful for them to know that they're – unofficially, but there are different sort of tiers of, of, of trips. Like, yeah. you know, I can't be off for that long, or I know that's really expensive, or, man, that's really mm-hmm. daunting. I mean, could you, could you explain to everybody a little bit about how – um, there's really is something for everybody here. There's something that you can do and something that you could do with your family too. Yeah. And, and so, some are a little bit more extreme. That's for sure. 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 Uh, um, you know, I've always kind of looked at it this way to some degree, and I know we don't, we don't, we don't say this specifically, but, uh, like you, like you alluded to, uh, certain, certain tiers, like again, India is not for everybody. Um, but maybe, um, you know, a four day trip to, to New York is, uh, um, uh, again, it just, it just varies. And again, depending on, uh, what's going on there, yeah, there could be some construction things. Uh, maybe you're gifted and skilled in that area and could utilize that in Vermont, uh, or maybe this upcoming, you know, perhaps uh, Portland trip as well, uh, coming up in maybe in 25. And so, um, so yeah, it's not, it's not, you know, every trip is not for everybody. Uh, and so, um, and would you say there's a place for lots of different spiritual gifts on these trips? Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Um, um, you know, and then when we think, think about Guatemala, it's more, Hey, we're, we're diving into and helping invest in a local church by, you know, teaching uh, healthy membership and, and, uh, eldership and things of that nature, uh, which is different than Vermont, uh, or which is different than, you know, even to some of Kenya yeah. uh, and um, things of that nature. But even so. in that, every one of those places, there's, you know, there's definitely needs for teachers in those places. Where oh, we yeah, go. Yeah, we yeah, have yeah, to, yeah. we have to fill the spot, so to speak, of, of teaching the word in yeah, different ways yeah. in every one of those spots. But every one of those trips also needs people that can just build relationships. Relationships, yeah. They can just, they can love on those people and be that's an right. encouragement to the missionaries that are there. That's right. And also the people that are there in yeah. both ways. You know, that's a, that's a huge part that, you don't necessarily have to be a teacher to go yeah, on one of these trips yeah. and really be a benefit to the, yeah. to the if team. If you love kids, we've got opportunities where you can minister hands-on with kids. If, yeah. Like you said, if you want to swing a hammer, yeah, we can do that. If you want to go and, and give support to, yeah. um, you know, I'm, going to, I'm going to India next month, and I'll be there for, well, total time because of travel time and everything, just about two weeks, um, in-country time, about 10 days. In that 10 days, I've got four days of... of pastor conferences, and um, I tagged actually my, my actual brother, my biological brother, to go along with me, and he's not a teacher, so he says, what am I going to do on this trip? I said, well, one, you can help me carry my bags and stuff like that. No, I'm kind of joking. <laughs> um, you can be my food tester. You can go ahead of me. But I said, you know, just just to engage with people. Yeah. I just, you know, just go out there, talk to people, be engaging to people, have lots of conversations. Just being there, that presence is, is beneficial, and I'll have good notes, so God forbid if something happens to me, just stand up and read my notes and let the interpreter take it and run with it. But, I mean, you know, that's yeah. an extreme example. But, I mean, we've got just – I just want people to know there's, there's there's something for you to do out there. That's right. And there's yeah. some trips that you could take your your 
you know, maybe your older children at least, but at least your teenagers for sure yeah. that could go along with yeah. you and, and yeah. see and observe and be part of it firsthand. And, and I don't yeah. want to I don't want to downplay also just the idea of giving to this because yeah. if you start looking around at what Calvary's done in the last few years, not Calvary, uh, that's well Calvary people, and also what God has done through us when it comes to these missionaries, we have been able to really change some of some ministries that we're a part yeah. of because of the amount of giving that, that Calvary members have felt led to give. Yes, yeah. And and that's important. You know, we talk about a lot of times, Paul, that some of these trips, you know, they may not need us as much as they actually need our finances at times. Yeah. You know, we, we start thinking about the return on investment of, of taking some of these trips around the world or wherever they are. Sometimes that's good just because it's, you know, it's back to New Testament, just going and encouraging and being mm. an encourager. But also sometimes they just, they don't have the funds to do ministry like, like could be done. Yeah. There's needs all over the place. So if, if that's where God is, has blessed you and you want to, uh, you can't go because you work too much. Well, maybe with that working too much, you got some extra bills sure. and you can, you know, you can help in that way. There are plenty of opportunities to give uh, in our missions yeah. area. Yeah. This upcoming Definitely. India trip, for instance, there's there's huge needs there for those displaced uh, young people. Um, not all orphans, many of them just displaced their homes because of the civil conflict in Manipur um, that's driven them from their homes. Their homes were burned down uh, by by radicals in the north. And so C.V. Vadavana and the ministry there at Sathayam has been trying to house them. And so, you know, it, not a, it was not part of their budget plan. A year and a half ago to do this, yeah. but they saw the opportunity and felt the need, and they're trying to do the best they can with it. But they need resources, and it's just like that everywhere. Yeah, I mean, everywhere, a, everywhere we point to, there are just there's just needs that needs. really can only be met financially. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Tommy, make yep. a make a plug to the missions conference also, because I know this is a main part of what the missions committee and you see as kind of a how do we what's our strategy yeah, towards getting yeah. people it's, it's like it's a, it's a catalyst you know, it's a catalyst of connecting you know who you're praying for and who you're what you're giving toward uh, for those missionaries to be here to be a part of us to, to share to make those relational connections you're talking about um, so that's going to be that's been coming up in February I um, mean this is a with a, a, a it's not an annual it's a biannual, biannual. thing that's right uh, February 21st and 22nd 2025 so go ahead and put that on your calendar um, to be a part of that um, and um, we're working out all the, the details of that but we're going to try to have as many mission partners strategic partners from all over the uh, the world that we support here uh, so that uh, so that you can make those connections uh, there's a tangible um, you can talk to them Right. see for themselves and hear from from them themselves instead of hearing from you know maybe a person who's went which is good hey eh, but but here and um again who you're praying for and what you're praying for and what you're giving toward uh all that becomes tangible when they're here and so uh so that's my plug 21st yeah, 22nd and I, you know back when we did one for kenya this past time we did, a, I mean, a, a podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Robertson was on. Josh, yeah, he was he, the one us. He yeah. actually, you know, that's how he got plugged in. That's right. Was he came to the missions conference, he heard Moses, and he basically said, I'm going to go. go that, yeah. And now he's one of the biggest proponents right. of missions. And, right. and I think he's on the missions committee now, He right? is on the missions yeah, committee. Yeah, so, I mean, so. Uh, hopefully it acts like that for that's other it. members. Yeah, they, that's right. They see it and, yeah. and see what's happening there. Man, I hope and pray, too, beyond even – I hope we'll have a number of people inspired. I will have more people going on short-term mission projects – in 2025 that we had in 2024, but I still pray and long to see uh, some of our people called out longer term. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's another thing when you think of you know kind of a, a, a long, um, a long arching goal of, of ours is to see people raise up within the local church here uh, to go out, uh, and um, we'll see what that goes, what the Lord does in that. But keep praying toward that end. But yeah, that's that's one of those things that we would desire to see um and uh, see what the lord does in the next uh, next few years or so so yep all right well let's do our other one our, our number four the fourth aim for us uh, as we move past good stewards is reproducing disciples um so as we think about reproducing disciples this is um this is where we're talking about life on life stuff but we're also talking about how we're sharing the gospel and and there's a couple of things paul that we we have here on the sheet um, that I want to make mention of. The first one, it says uh, structured evangelism. How would, wh how would you explain, or how did you explain structured evangelism for, for us as a church member? Think of structured evangelism as us coming uh, alongside each other, something we would do collectively, um, something that we've planned out with, with an intent of getting the gospel to lost people. It's not, it's not 
through just circumstances or happenstances is planned out. Sometimes the structured things are really meant to be, they're meant to be a catalyst to other things. You know, like, like, let me explain it this way, Charles. I'll try to keep this short. So for us, you know, our strategy is not um, trying to be an attractional church in the sense that what we do on Sunday morning is, is church for unchurched people so they come and hear the gospel like it's a, a perpetual outreach machine kind of thing. Our, our aim on Sundays is to gather as a church, gather as God's people. And so what we do on Sundays is just an outcropping of who we are. It's God's people coming together. So we're going to worship, and we're going to pray, and we're going to sing, and we're going to seek God. At the same time, we're going to be praying for our lost friends and neighbors. We're going to be praying that, that God will send people our way, that God will give us opportunities. But our aim is to not be seeker-driven as a church, but to drive our people to be seekers, to seek out lost people, yeah. um, to find them where they are. And so even the things that we do structured, whether that's a big event um, or whether it's a, a, a planned series of events, really the, it, there, it's a means to an end. So for instance, if we were to do something like have a, a, a concert or a big name speaker to come, we wouldn't be just expecting that in that moment we're gonna a lot of people are gonna get saved. We'll pray that some that people would respond to the gospel and that and would get saved. But we're also creating these these environments, these opportunities where you can invite people. We're trying to put a tool in your hand. So I would say ultimately the structured evangelism is the church working collectively to try to put some tools in our hands together to use. So if it's something here at the church, we want to do something where you can say, Hey, I'm gonna invite people to that. I can invite people to that. And sometimes those are on small scale things. You know, like one we're doing right now that's a, real, a low key thing would be once a month we got men's a men's breakfast. That's not just for our guys. That's not just for the men of the church. Invite some people to come. Invite the guys you work with. Come, hey, I'll I'll provide breakfast for you. I'll take care of breakfast. Come and we got this little group that meets. Um, invite them to come. That's a low key one. But there's some bigger things we want to do. So it's how we do it together. I'd say structured is the planned things that we do as a church community. For the sake of the gospel, and so we've got some thoughts on that coming up. Yeah, and I and I would say with that, you know, we 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 kicked it around today in in staff meeting because this is something that we know that we we need to do another structured event. Right now, we're kind of thinking through that. Um, would you Would you agree with me that mm. if you're listening to this podcast and you you think up an idea or you've seen something that that you think uh, would be helpful uh, for us as a church to do together when it comes to evangelism, bring it to us. Uh, we would love uh, love for you to have an idea that the church takes takes ownership of and goes out and, and does together when it comes to evangelism yeah for sure and, and obviously it has to fit within what we think is is healthy church life what's a healthy way of communicating the gospel what's a, a biblically god-honoring way that sort of thing we're not you know again i'm not we're not setting up a circus here on sunday morning i'm not riding a motorcycle through hoops of fire just so you can invite what? your you know your friend to come and watch it man um, you know we believe certain things we believe the power of, of the gospel is inherent in it we believe that that the word does its work as the Holy Spirit directs, and so in a context of what we think is healthy and biblical evangelism, yeah, bring you know bring some thoughts and some ideas, um, some things that you'd be willing to do. So we're kicking around things again that we've done in the past, like uh, you know like block parties or you know, evangelistic some targeted outreach sort of things. But our bread and butter with that would probably our bread and butter in making disciples probably still remains the other category. Yeah, which we've just loosely titled personal initiative. Do you remember how long it took us to come up with those two words? <laughs> I, I, I don't. I try not to think about it because I look at it now and I, I look at the chart now and I'm well pleased with it. So, no, I, no, I, I put those mind. painful memories I didn't, I didn't aside. Say that. I didn't say that. Yeah, we get hung up on semantics sometimes. Well, you know, and, you know it, it needs to make sense, you know, and, mm -hmm. and also. Well, so let me explain that. Say, the, yeah. the personal initiative. I mean, here's the thing we, it's a both and, right? You know, we, we don't want to just be constantly trying to drum up what's the next big thing what's the next big thing i remember we had a church member a while back um no longer with us but had, had really just always driven that point well so what's the next thing what's the next thing and you could tell that their church experience over that point had been like that sort of a ro roller coaster right yeah, yeah. you know you plan another big event then it's a long lull then what's the next big event and these sort of things keep us going you can't keep momentum that way um this is not a cop-out this is a philosophical base slow and steady you know we're just we're giving it out week after week after week we're training up our people we're teaching our folks how to disciple their own children we're equipping people with biblical knowledge theological uh, theological knowledge um, apologetics all those kind of things because we want our people to take the initiative 
And, and again, we also, I guess, Charles, the best way we could describe this is we believe in sort of a, a free market economy of evangelism. I mean, we don't, we don't have to tell you how to do this or the yeah. best ways to do this necessarily. What will work in your context? I mean, maybe the best thing that you could do evangelistically would be to take your love of, of soccer and volunteer to coach in a community league. And then from that, I'm not saying, well, you know, I can't just be giving the gospel. I can't be doing evangelism every practice. No, but you can, you can pray, and you can meet parents, and you can invite those parents to your house, and you can have a dinner. And you, I mean, there are just a lot of things. So again, what we're saying with the personal, evangel- uh, personal initiative is, what can I do where I am? What, and again, we'll help you. We'd love to. In fact, Charles, that's one of the things we're working on right now is basically just putting together some, some ideas. Here's a, the, you'll soon find a place on our website where you can find, here's some ways I can do evangelism right where I am. And I don't need a program for that. Um, yeah, I remember, I remember one of the things that uh, when we were going through the ideas behind this, one of the concepts uh, that was from the associational level when we met with them was this idea of the crowd cloud. Remember that? And the idea is that, you know, we have a crowd, we have a congregation, we have a, a certain people that are here on Sunday mornings that we would say in our gathering, this is us. But then every one of those people have another group of people that they actually have influence over. And so Mm -hmm. when you start mapping out how many people that is that Calvary members have influence towards, that crowd gets really, really big. And that's really exciting if we think about our personal initiative of evangelism is towards that cloud around us of our personal influence. And so how can we influence that towards the gospel? That's a lot more than you can do by preaching once a week, or we can do in little small groups of 500 people. Man, if we look at all the people that are represented by each one of our clouds around us and how we're getting the gospel to them, that to me is what personal initiative is to those. How are we getting it to them? Everybody, yeah, everybody leveraging that sphere of influence that they have. And, and, being intentional about it. I mean, just because just because you're a Christian and you're doing something doesn't make it evangelistic. And um, even if you wear a Christian T-shirt or you know something like that, if you wear a Calvary shirt, I mean, that's a that might be a, a start for a conversation. Yeah. But for it to be evangelistic, gospel conversations have to be had at some point. Um, you know, this is one part I want to emphasize here, and I say this with some caution because I don't want anybody listening to think that this is our primary strategy. There may have been a time in church life, not necessarily ours, whatever church you were from, or any church, where this is your primary strategy. It's not primary by any means, but it shouldn't be absent, okay? And that's this. Um, we need to do a much better job of just simply being excited about our own church and inviting people. Yeah. Yeah. Just And again, on our own, not, not waiting for us to publicize something or us to um, do some sort of advertising campaign, but just... We need to be out there doing that on our own. And I'll tell you this, so I'll, this, is, this is maybe going to be tricky. If you're listening, you say, you know what, Paul, I would like to be doing more of that, but um, here's why I don't. I'd like for you to tell me the why you don't, hmm. okay? Because that would be really helpful for us. Yeah. You know, so if somebody says, well, I've invited people, but they, they weren't treated too nicely or they weren't greeted, man, we need to know that. That's something the whole church needs to know because that's a, that's a culture problem. Yeah. Um, and and directed particularly at me. If you say, you know, I'd invite him, but man, you know, your preaching is wonky, and no one's going to understand that. <laughs> Tell me that. Tell me that. Um, so, my point is this: that's not primary because, and the reason I say it's not primary, and you guys jump in on this, that's probably sort of if, if there's a continuum of people far from God to people close to putting their faith and trust in Christ, the inviting the church, inviting the church stage is probably on that other end of the continuum, you know, the people closer yeah, to that. Yeah. People far away from God coming to church is not going to be their thing, right? right. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I I can think of some places you can invite me. I'm, I'm not going to go. I don't care how enthusiastic you are about it. You know, I'm just, I'm not going there. I don't care about that. I'm not interested in that, that sort of thing. So I get it. That's not for everybody. But that still needs to be a constant staple. It's not everything we do, but it ought to be the least that we can do. Mm-hmm. But for those people who are farther from God, say, well, they're not going to come to church. They don't want any part of this. This would be just like foreign language to them. Then the first invitation is probably an invitation to your house right. or an invitation to coffee or start building relationships, start having conversations. Yeah. And then when they start thinking about things, having questions about, and then when they start showing interest, they say, man, come go to church with me. Why don't you come go to church with me? I'd love, to, I'd, I'd love for you just to you know, experience what we do in here, and we'll talk about it, you know, that sort of thing. But again, I want to emphasize for our folks 
let's not be negligent in inviting people. I think I think there is a whole untapped audience of people, whole untapped harvest of people. Let me use that term instead. Audience is a bad term because I'm not we're not producing a program here or show. There's an untapped harvest out there of people that are responding to being invited. They're just being invited somewhere else. Hmm. So um, whatever that means, however you can do that. Uh, and, and, and Charles, this is something we've talked about. You know, Tom, we hit this a little bit in the staff meeting today. We tend to find that most of the people around us say they go to church somewhere. Right? I mean, that, yeah. that's the feedback we get from people oh, all yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know anybody. You know, my neighbors are members of such and such. I can tell you the stats don't bear that out. I mean, they may tell you that, but, um, I mean, Charles, you know this from some of our elder conversations sometimes. I mean, when, we, when we're trying to recoup very disconnected church members, I mean, it, I won't say it's common, and, and I will say it's rare, but it's happened. We'll call a church member who doesn't know who the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church is. Yeah. Okay, so you know, it, I've been here twelve and a half years. So I mean, that if they're as connected as that to their church, then yeah, then they're part of the harvest. Okay, right. they're not harvesters; they're part of the harvest. I'm just yeah. saying, at the very least, our first step in this is inviting people to church. But yeah. beyond that, there's so many other things of taking some initiative. Yep. So, so that's all four of our our main aims as as we look at how to be ambassadors. There's um, we've given to you in two podcasts. Uh, there are cards of this in the uh, at Calvary the, the Next Steps table and also down at the Resource Center that you can pick up Calvary Next cards. And one thing I want to point out on those cards is on the back of each one there are a couple of questions. And really, what those questions are are meant or designed to be is a is really for you when you're thinking about that aim, is a good question or two to really prompt you to say, am I doing this? Am I being what we're saying we're being as Calvary? So use those. Maybe if you're in a D group, uh, we would love for you to start using those as some of the diagnostic questions you use in your groups to just see how your, uh, you and the other members in your group are, are, are living up to this trying to be ambassadors for Christ. Yeah, we talk about accountability as one of the key purposes of a discipleship group. Those are great accountability questions. Hey, Tommy, mm-hmm. real quick, before we no, wrap up, I want to circle back to something. Um, you, you mentioned some numbers of people who've gone and that sort yep. of thing, and, mm-hmm. and we didn't talk too much or really anything in specifics about local ministry opportunities. Um, uh, if you had to just guess, okay, if we filled every opportunity that's been presented to us, every need that we're aware of, both with our global partners and with local partners, how many slots could you, do you think there are? Just throw me a number out there. If we if we filled them all, if we provided somebody on every trip we wanted to go on, and every volunteer in these ministries that we sponsor and support and are involved in, and and school where we want to provide tutors and volunteers, all well, how many slots are we talking about? Well, um, I'd say probably two two hundred. 250 and so if anybody says i don't think there's any there's just nothing for me to do I can, like, there is there, there absolutely is, is. and yeah. i would tell you this and i'm sure tommy would would agree some of these mission projects that we do okay these are not like fixed number projects so for instance if we had a hundred people that say, i really want to go to guatemala i really want to serve there I, i'm not saying we could necessarily put every person there in 2025 yeah. but maybe we double the amount of trips that we take sure, there yeah. because we have the people to do them and yeah. we can do some additional things. Yeah. Um, if we had if we had tons of people willing to go, interested in going to Kenya, then I could easily foresee us doing that two times a year yeah. um, for two different sort of purposes, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if we have people that are willing to uh, to go to, to New York, yeah. if we have people willing to go to New Orleans, New Orleans yeah. or Vermont um, or Portland, Portland. We can send you there, and 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 here's one. I'll just sort of throw this out. It's like a mm-hmm. like an Easter egg here. When when the Lord so works and leads and opens up opens up these opportunities for us for some church planting and replanting, then that 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 gate is going to open up wide. We're going to have so many opportunities and so many needs for people to step into and fill. Yeah, opportunities yeah. galore. That's right. So. Yep. So if you're interested, if you if you want to know where you can serve, if maybe your heart's been um, kind of touch to get involved in some area. Maybe it's here locally in a ministry at Calvary or 
um, then find a pastor. We would love to, any of us can point you in the right direction. Um, if it's community wise, uh, of course, see Tommy or, or once again, we can when, point you to Tommy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then also in global the same way. So um, there's Tommy's the grayest headed one of us all. So if you're looking at the yeah, staff, he's, he's the, the one the wise, with the grayest hair. Grayest, grayest hair. Don't oh, say okay, wise grayest guy. hair. Okay. I thought you said great. So not gray. No, it's, okay. it's Tommy the gray. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, to recap these real quick, Charles, these are things that we do. We want our people to gather, but not just gather. That's essential, but it's not sufficient for you to be a fully formed disciple of Christ. We want you to gather. We want you to be part of the hub of what we do, the body gather on Sunday for worship. We want you to be part of a small group, but we also want you to, to develop and to grow. We want you to be equipped and trained. So we're trying to, we're offering these classes. And soon, uh, Dan wasn't here for today's class, uh, for today's podcast here last week. We're going to be, uh, we'll be publishing our next cycle of open classes and it'll be long term. So you'll be able to look and plan that. We want you to be trained. We want you to be in a D group, but we also want you to serve. So we want you to find some way to use the gifts to minister here, some mm-hmm. way to serve one of these ministry partners. Yeah. And if we're healthy disciples, um, we want you to multiply. So, be, when there, next time there's a big structured event, you can be part of it. Jump in, um, come and come and be part of that. Um, even if it's a little daunting, or you know, if you've never done it before, jump in with us. But also be praying and seeking. Um, what can I be doing? How mm-hmm. how can I find a way? How can God use me where I am for the sake of the gospel? So, yeah. gathering, developing, serving, multiplying—that's really the heart of things. All right. So uh, we'll catch you next time. Remember, we are for God, for Dothan, and for the world.